Hey there. I've always been curious about the history of Alberta, particularly when it comes to its indigenous peoples. Do you know anything about it? Hi. Absolutely. Alberta has a rich and complex history, with indigenous peoples playing a central role. Let's dive into it. Great! So, when did indigenous peoples first inhabit what is now Alberta? Indigenous peoples have lived in what's now Alberta for thousands of years. The earliest evidence of human habitation in the region dates back to around 12,000 years ago, at the end of the last ice age. These early inhabitants were likely ancestors of modern indigenous groups. That's fascinating. Can you tell me more about the different indigenous groups in Alberta and their histories? Of course. Alberta is home to several indigenous groups, each with its own unique history and culture. Some of the prominent ones include the Cree, Blackfoot, Dean, Nakoda, Stony, and Métis peoples. Let's start with the Cree. What can you tell me about their history in Alberta? The Cree have a deep history in Alberta, particularly in the northern and central regions. They were traditionally a nomadic people who relied on hunting, fishing, and gathering for their sustenance. In the 18th century, European fur traders arrived in the area, leading to the Cree's involvement in the fur trade. Ah, the fur trade. I've heard that it played a significant role in Alberta's history. How did it impact the indigenous peoples? The fur trade was transformative. It brought new goods and technologies, like firearms and metal tools, but it also disrupted traditional ways of life and introduced diseases. Indigenous peoples, including the Cree, became key participants in the fur trade as hunters and trappers, which influenced their social and economic structures. And what about the Blackfoot Nation? What's their history in Alberta? The Blackfoot, which consists of the Siksika, Kane, and Pinecani tribes, have a rich history in southern Alberta. They were known as skilled bison hunters and traders. The arrival of horses in the late 18th century transformed their culture and allowed them to hunt more effectively. Horses must have been a game changer. Did the Blackfoot Nation interact with European settlers too? Yes, they did. Like the Cree, the Blackfoot people were involved in the fur trade and established relationships with European traders and settlers. However, this contact also led to conflicts and tensions, as European settlement expanded into their territories. What about the Dean people? I've heard less about them in Alberta's history. The Dean are indigenous peoples of the northern and western regions of Alberta. They have a history of nomadic hunting and gathering, with a strong focus on caribou hunting. The Dean have a rich oral tradition and a deep spiritual connection to the land. That sounds fascinating. I'd love to learn more about the Nakoda, Stony, and Métis peoples as well. Certainly. The Nakoda, also known as the Stony Nakoda, have a history in the foothills and mountainous areas of Alberta. They have traditionally relied on hunting, fishing, and gathering. And like other indigenous groups, they experienced changes due to European contact. And what about the Métis? The Métis are a distinct indigenous group with a mixed indigenous and European heritage. They played a crucial role in Alberta's history, particularly during the fur trade era. The Métis developed a unique culture, blending indigenous and European traditions, including a distinctive language called Mishif. It's amazing to see how diverse Alberta's indigenous history is. How did European colonization impact these indigenous groups? European colonization had significant and often detrimental impacts on indigenous peoples. The arrival of settlers led to land dispossession, disease outbreaks, and conflicts over resources. Treaties were signed between indigenous nations and the Canadian government, but these often did not fulfill the promises made. That's unfortunate. What can you tell me about the treaties in Alberta? Alberta is covered by several treaties, including Treaty 6, Treaty 7, and Treaty 8, which were signed between the late 19th and early 20th centuries. These agreements were meant to provide benefits and protections to indigenous peoples, but many issues, such as land rights and access to resources, remain contentious to this day. It's clear that the history of Alberta's indigenous peoples is complex and filled with challenges. How have these communities adapted and persevered over time? Despite the hardships, indigenous communities in Alberta have shown resilience and a strong connection to their cultures and traditions. They have worked to preserve their languages, traditions, 
and spiritual practices. In recent decades, there has been a resurgence of indigenous pride and activism, leading to positive changes in areas like education, health care, and self-governance. That's inspiring to hear. It's crucial that we acknowledge and learn from this history. Is there anything else you'd like to share about the history of Alberta and its indigenous peoples? There is so much more to explore, from the impact of residential schools to contemporary indigenous issues. It's essential for all Canadians to engage with this history, understand the ongoing challenges faced by indigenous communities, and work towards reconciliation and a better future. Thank you for sharing this valuable information. I'll definitely continue learning about Alberta's history and the experiences of its indigenous peoples.